Hello everyone, welcome to Game Tech UK and this video which is a look around the brand new Thrustmaster F1 wheel called the SF1000. It's now natively supported in iRacing and many of you will know I absolutely love iRacing. So let's have a look inside the box and then go over to iRacing and put it through its paces. So here's the packaging, the Thrustmaster and Ferrari logo are there for the SF1000 and just look at it, I haven't opened this yet so this is a live unboxing, it looks fantastic, very very excited to receive this. On the back there it just lets you know about the ecosystem and all the different bases it will fit, also it's just letting you know that there is an additional paddle set, the T-Cronus that you can purchase for this um, but it does come obviously with paddles itself. It's compatible with PC, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, and the Xbox X and S series of consoles as well. So whatever you've got, you're gonna be good to go with this. Once out the outer sleeve, what have we got? Let's have a look. So we, oh my God, yeah, we've got the wheel. Let's get that straight out. Oh, that is lovely. Yeah, look at that. That's beautiful, isn't it? Wow, when you compare that to their 2011 um, edition of the F1 wheel, um, the main difference being is that all of these buttons are usable. So every single button on the 2011 version, this was just a sticker and it was just made for show. This, everything here is usable. You can also press these down as well. Look, you can press these down and move them as well. So this is natively supported by Formula One 2020 and Formula, obviously the next Formula One 2021. But for PC, this is currently natively supported in iRacing, which I'm really, really excited about. So Dan damage, tyre, fuel, gear changing will all be on the L LCD screen here and I know you're going to enjoy this, of course you are. <laughs> So what else have we got in the box? Got a little bit of information about the actual wheel because this is a direct copy of Ferrari's 2020 66th apparently single seater production by Ferrari. This is an exact replica of their F1 2020. So if you look in game or even look at the real Ferrari um, uh, Formula One car, this is exactly how it looks. And I love that. I mean, this would look great even hanging on the wall as a replica, let alone one that we can use not only in F1 games, but on the PC and in other titles as well. I'm really, really excited about this. One gripe that I had with the last F1 wheel um, was the sort of sticky material on the handles. And although that did sort of correct itself after a few hours of use this has got a lovely feel I can't even describe this it it feels rubbery it's probably made of some kind of rubber um, or plastic but it's also got a sort of like a, a very gentle suede effect to it um, yeah it's really interesting I mean it is plastic it's not suede don't get me wrong but it's got a soft feel to it um, so I'm really really excited about that it's got clutch um, pedals as well built in this is good this is good stuff uh, so here are the um, actual gear change paddles so you've got to put them on separately which we'll do it in a second um, I think they are yeah they are metal yeah they are metal um, so we'll put that on in a second in this box we've got some instructions and the box contents in here we probably got the allen key and screws um, to affix the gear paddles and we've got a usb cable as well so the time to put the paddles on before you put the paddles on though and it is important to note this before you put the paddles on you actually update the firmware through the supplied cable and that little socket there so you just put that into the pc run the Thrustmaster. Um, firmware updater program and it will update it unlike the other wheels which seem to do it through the base this one seems to do it separately so if you put the paddles on first you're going to have to take them off for you to do the firmware upgrade which you will most definitely need to do attaching the paddles does seem very very easy you've got this um, uh, pc connector here that slots into the uh, section of motherboard there so that just literally presses in and then you've got four screws um, to simply put in with the supply Allen key. As always with this, you don't want to over tighten them. So they're all in. And one thing you do notice is that it's a quite a noisy click. It's a very, it's a very solid click. And obviously being F1, you can go forward and backwards on either side of the paddles. That's for drivers that are trying to do controls and change gear as well. Um, I'm not sure it, what the difference is with the upgraded paddles, but this is the one that comes with it. A very, very very solid click very solid if a little loud but it's all there 
and I'm sure on the PC you could probably, if you didn't like these um, you, and you wanted your pads to be a little bit lower, you could probably reassign for those to be um, gears. But this is the official paddle. There it is. Very clicky, very solid. It's time to get it on the base. So once your firmware is done, you go into iRacing, which is now natively supporting uh, this particular SF1000. Actually, I'm in the brand new GTR3 911 and the brand new recently released uh, Red Bull Ring as well in iRacing. But back to the display, this is natively supported. So I didn't have to do anything to this wheel to get it to be seen apart from customize it for myself. Uh, for example, uh, we can move the, um, you know, the actual uh, black box and look in left and right. But everything else is as is now this display is the most important thing and it's already it's it's not a gimmick i'm already looking down and glancing down at my display and you can change it as well so you've got this display on the right and you can press it for um if you want to go white if you're racing at night for example there's a lot of information on here fuel battery revs um you've got lap timers on there as well and these can be changed so you've got actual information as well. This is, I should imagine, um, the sort of uh, parameters it's getting from the game. But there's a lot of information here. And each each setting has got different um, different features. Like you can traction balance, tyre compound, engine mode. You can press that to get rid of the lines as well. There's a lot of information here. Yeah, each one has got lots of different settings. So there, for example, you know, we've got um, lap timers, gear selector, tyres... Yeah, there's a lot of stuff here, a lot of stuff. We've got the um, the rev limiter, um, the rev lights up the top there as well. It is very, very cool. It feels nice and solid. It's quite a hefty weight to it. I would say a little bit more than the previous F1 wheel. But you can change all this on the fly as well if you want to. You can get rid of the white little white bars. Yeah, 49% fuel. I can see my temperature. I can see the miles per hour. You know, if you do like a clear HUD on your screen when you're racing, this is actually going to enable you to take some of the stuff off the screen and just have it on the actual steering wheel. I mean, it's uh, it's working perfectly. There's no delay. You know, I was I was thinking maybe there'd be a delay, but the revs and everything is all exactly where it should be. I'm really impressed with it. And the fact that if you do race at night, which I don't really because uh, I do most of my racing streaming, but if you do race at night, it's going to be really nice to be able to have this lit up on your steering wheel. It's really, really cool. I'm actually very, very impressed with it. And to have things like your tyre um, condition and how much fuel just at a glance, it's, uh, yeah, I think uh, it's going to be absolutely fantastic. And of course, this is supported, like I say, in F1. Um, and any on-screen display that you get in F1 for like your damage and your tyres and your fuel will all be on here as well. But for iRacing, this is going to be cool. You know, there's a lot of useful information. This isn't this isn't gimmicky. You know, sim racing is becoming so complex, and any any advantage you can give yourself like this is most welcome in i in, in uh, sim racing. Most welcome indeed. But you've got the uh, lap timers there. And these buttons have got a, a lovely click to them. They're really, they're a nice solid click. I'm really impressed. <laughs> I do love me Thrustmaster stuff, I must say. I mean, it is the only equipment I really use. And uh, yeah, I do like it. And with this, you can see, you don't, meet, you don't need me to tell you. They've made a premium product here. This is very, very cool. You get rid of the lines. If you're on a more of a static uh, display, you can certainly have that. Yeah, this is um, this is really good. This car's really nice, and the track's pretty good as well. Like I say, all uh, freshly released in iRacing yesterday. So I'm yet to decide which one I actually fancy the most. Yeah, I think I don't know. It's going to be hard to decide. And do you want white bars? Do you want not white bars? I suppose it's the easiest. I suppose it's what you're looking for um, in your display what you're actually going to um, what you're going to actually choose do you want information about the car do you want your gear change do you want your rev range um, do you want your lap times tires to me is quite important so that could be quite a good one you know you've got a lot more information on this one like your tire compound what engine mode you're in but it's very static so it depends on what you're after really but it's just lovely to have that extra information 
I would say at your fingertips, but at your eyes. All you have to do is glance down, um, like you would in an F1 car, obviously. And certain GT3 cars would have this. And I'm going to use this as my go-to wheel now, absolutely. I mean, I know it's an F1 wheel, but it feels very GT3-ish. Um, the GT3 wheels are now very similar to this. So this will now be my go-to um, rim, absolutely no doubt about that. It is a shame that Gran Turismo isn't supported yet, but I'm sure it will be. I'm sure it will be. In fact, I've got no doubt that it will be. Ultima Ballista 2, um, you know, and on the Forza side, that would be great to have all that supported. I'm sure that will come. Obviously, that's down to each individual developer, but I'm sure they're working all very hard with Thrustmaster to get it done, just like I race in her. So I race in outside of Codemasters is the first one to get it working um, on the PC which is cool as you can see you know it's really really usable that's quite a good one without the white bars as well yeah you get quite a lot of information on that one we've got fuel and I'm glancing down as I'm as I'm driving temperature what lap I'm on what position that's really good as well I mean honestly you could go you could almost go hudless here you know, you've got everything on there you've got lap time yeah it's uh, it's really useful it's useful. You know, you can get some accessories and add-ons for all sorts of things, um, including sim racing. And not all of them add to it. They add to the aesthetics. Um, they add to the, the sort of gimmick side. But this is, this is usable stuff. I think with that particular screen we've got there, you could almost go HUDless. Almost. And I do like a, um, a clear HUD anyway. I mean, of course, you've got a lot of it on the actual screen of the car in the game, but uh, yeah, this is uh, its better than I thought. I've only got one gripe, and it's a small gripe, and that is my usual go-to rim from Thrustmaster is the Sparco rim. Now, not because it's uh, particularly better than any other rim. I mean, the TGT, the Gran Turismo wheel that it comes with is fantastic. Um, it's got more buttons than the Sparco, but the reason I like the Sparco, it's got a slightly wider diameter, and I, my only gripe with this is that um, it isn't slightly wider. That would have been the cherry on top, but it's got so many other features and it looks so nice. Um, it really isn't an issue. Yeah, it really isn't an issue. I'm very, very happy with it and can't wait to start using it in racing. So there you go, a fantastic wheel, feels really premium, it's lovely to have that Ferrari branding on it and it's reasonably priced as well. I would like to thank Thrustmaster for sending it over for me to use and play on the channel and of course you'll be seeing much more of this because as I say, this is now my go-to wheel fitment on the TGT base. But that is it everyone, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.